He won. I just about lost control around that corner. TK, we're going I want to, to check the tires. Help! I'm over here. We are against the clock. I don't know how long that ambulance is going to be. I need to do this to save your life. Just trust me. sure I can get you something? Another coffee? I have to go. Uh, please, don't, Morgan. I promise you, I'm not an ex-murderer. I'm just a single guy who doesn't mind a blind date. Especially one like this. You might be single, I'm not. You're married? Happily. But why would she...? Her idea of a joke, I suppose. She's dragged you here for nothing. It's very embarrassing. I'm sorry. Oh, it's not your fault. Let me get you that coffee. I just said I'm, I'm married. I know, I wasn't suggesting... I'm not stupid. I can guess what Araho's told you. But take it from me. I am not on the market and I don't play around. $130, my first week's board, as promised. Where did you get this? I thought you said you weren't getting paid till next week. It's out of my savings. I thought I would start as I meant to go on and pay in advance. It's the mature thing to do. Well, you certainly know how to make a point, Sophie. Can't say I'm happy, but I do admire your strength of character. Yes, Sarah? Uh, word from ED. TK and Brooke are hands-on at a pretty gnarly MVA. Where? Dale Road. Motorcyclist in Pillion lost it on the bend. <sighs> Dale Road. What's it going to take to get it upgraded? How many deaths so far this year? Mm, enough to keep us in business. Uh, the Ambos are on their way, but there's no way that TK and Brooke are going to make that photo shoot. No, of course not. Uh, I'll, I'll get on to the photographer. Sorry, Soph, I've got to sort this. Sure. No problem. Brooke, what's happening? Come on, Bob. Come on, you need to wake up. Come on. Brooke! He's unconscious! Please tell me I did the right thing. Come on, Bob. Come on, wake up. They're here! Pops arrived. Come on, Bob, wake up. Brooke, what do you need? Um, an airway, oxygen. He has multiple injuries. The other victim's the girl over there with TK. How you doing, TK? OK, mate, you finish there first. I did an emergency needle fluorocotomy. He lost consciousness about six minutes ago. I, I, I can't wake him. BP's 80 pal, pulse 40. I can't feel the pulse. He's arresting. Come on, Bob. Come on. You will not give up on me. You hear me? You will not give up. There's nothing to shock. Um, get adrenaline. And more fluids. He must be bleeding internally. Still nothing. Can't I have one milligram adrenaline? It's not working. He's gone into a systole. TK! Get over here! So that's what you think of me? That I'm anyone's for the price of a latte? Don't get all dramatic. I was helping you. Maddie's pretty hot, don't you reckon? I don't need help. I'm happily married and committed to Gerald for the rest of my life. Why can't you understand that? Oh, I understand perfectly. I understand that you're caught up in some playing house fantasy like you're six years old. You and Gerald all dressed up in your mummy and daddy costumes. Newsflash, honey. That's not real. Yes, it is. No. Real is hot, red blood running through your veins. Pretending it's not there won't make it go away. It's so typical of you. No clue about emotional commitment, certainly not love. You don't even have a real relationship. You're shagging our house guests. It could have been anyone. At least Hunter and I know what we want from each other. We're honest about it. I'm not the one living a lie. I'm not lying. I love Gerald. And you drool over guys like Hunter and Matt. I've seen you, Morgan. Oh, hey, what, what are you doing here? Just something I needed to see Araho about. Is everything okay? Yeah. I think we've cleared things up. Get more adrenaline. There's no point, Brooke. G just do it! We've been working on it for 20 minutes. There's nothing more we can do. There's always something. We, we just have to try. Okay, Wendy's stable, but we need to get a move on. Where are you guys at? We're done. Coin. It's 
Sophie, what do you think you're doing? What does it look like? A guy has just died down there, okay? You cannot take photos. It is disgusting. Get out of here. Hunter, what's up? Go. She's married, Ada. I don't do married. Morgan may have a ring on her finger, but trust me, that's where it ends. She's with the wrong bloke. And she's in serious need of a good... I thought you guys had hit it off. I have to go. Morgan. I just had a piece of Idaho. I truly did not know you are married. If you say so. Yeah, and when I asked you to stay for coffee, I wasn't hitting on you. I felt awkward. I wanted to smooth things out. I still do. All right, I believe you. We are both set up. I reacted badly. I'm sorry. Your husband's a lucky guy. Not as lucky as me. See you then, Morgan. See you, Matthew. So much for a fun day out. How are you guys holding up? OK. Uh, we did what we could. Some of us did better than others. Brooke did an excellent job, but her patient was too far gone to help. I know how that feels. It's tough. Comes with the territory. You don't have to be ED trained to know that. We all question ourselves when a patient dies, but that guy got the best treatment possible. There's no doubt about Come, it. Come, how about you buy me a coffee? We need to replan this photo shoot. Most kids your age want to hand it to them on a plate, but you know what? All the best journals started out as slaves. Slaves? Yeah, making coffee, running errands, or in my case, enabling my editor's gambling habit. <laughs> what? You thought you'd be running the news desk? What if I had a great story? I'd get paid for that though, right? Depends on the story. Well, I took these an hour ago. What's your angle? Blood on the council's hands. They've been warned that Dale Road is a death trap, but they continue to ignore it. Now, someone else is dead. We might be able to take the pictures off your hands. But I've just started researching the story, and it's my scope. Listen, write something up. I'll have a look at it. If it's any good, we'll talk some more. I sold my first story. What? To the Ferndale Gazette. I pitched my idea and they pounced. Can you believe it? Your first day? That's incredible. <sighs> you should have seen the guy's face. He was so impressed. They're going to take me on full time. I can feel it. So how much are they going to pay you? Oh, I'm not sure yet. So I haven't actually written anything. But when I do and they see how good I am, then I'll be straight on the payroll, which means you can have your money back. You haven't got to do that. No, I want you to have it. Yeah, and what will you be left with? An empty bank account again? It doesn't matter because soon I'll be flush. Next on the agenda, moving out. Then to my own place. Look, I know we're still meant to be on a break, but once I'm independent, there'll be nothing stopping us going public. There's your father, for starters. Look, after all that we've been through, after all the times you've tried to push me away, not even kissing Brooke could do it because we're meant to be together. Nothing's gonna break us up, okay? Especially my father. I don't want you rushing into leaving home because of me. Flatting's expensive, Sophie, and there's no guarantee you're going to get full-time work. And no guarantee that you'll stay in it, even if you do. Especially without any qualifications. I thought you'd be pleased for me. I am. I'm on a break, a long one, and I'm going to take you out for afternoon tea. Do you mind if I don't? I'm right in the middle of this. Well, it's just cleaning. Leave it. I'll do it later. I want to do it now, Gerald. I am capable. So I was right. It was about me. What? The spat with you and Aroha. There was no spat. You could have cut the ear with a knife. If she's trying to stop you having a baby with me, well, then I think that... She isn't. It's none of her business. But you did tell her. Is it meant to be a secret? No. Well, then, no harm done. OK, well, if you're not going to go with me, I may as well just head to the cafe. Gerald, I'm fine, all right? Aroha's fine. There's nothing to tell, really. I think we should start looking at houses again. What? Well, because 
we, we're going to need a home for the babies, right? Uh, and we've still got a good part of the deposit left, so I thought that if we try really hard... Can we please talk about this later? Sure. The uh, problem with accidents like this is the injuries are what we call multi-system. Meaning? They're severe and they affect more than one part of the body. So the patient needs coordinated treatment, often by several different surgeons. At a huge cost to the taxpayer, one which could easily be avoided if the council installed a few speed limits. Exactly. <laughs> Hi. Ready for train? Almost, mate. I'm just helping out Sophie you with an article for the school paper. Oh, um, actually, I've left school. I'm working for the Ferndale Gazette. Really? Congratulations. <laughs> Come on, man, we're gonna be late. I'll just grab my bag, man. Make it fun. Wow! Working out a paper. So much cooler than everyone else. I'm really sorry that I hurt you, Daniel, okay? Look, I just wanted to be honest with you. Yeah, right. You don't give a stuff how you treat people. It's not true. <laughs> you lead me on, Sophie. Like the user you are. So, what's the plan? Leave school and press the pants off Jared? Maybe I should warn Lucy. Why are you being like this? You used to be my best friend, and I miss that. I miss you, okay? Why don't you sit down? Are you leaving now, or am I? A baby! Gerald, that is wonderful news. Yeah, well, well, it, well, it was last night when we decided, but now Morgan's gone all distant. She's, she's shutting me out. Well, it's understandable she's a bit wary after all that business with the triplets. Well, no, this, this is all going to be straightforward, though, controlled by us right down to the, you know, the, the, the you-know-what. You know, the, the, the syringe thingy. Oh. Yeah, it's amazing how much info you can find on artificial insemination, actually. What I don't know so much about is ovulation. Yes, I'm I... sure that you're very organised. <gasps> well, you say that like it's a bad thing. Morgan may have pictured things a little differently, that's all. A more natural approach? Oh, you mean sex. No, y Yvonne, we've discussed all of that and we've agreed that this is the best way. Still, having a child is a huge step. Everything changes. Maybe Morgan was worried that things might change between you as a couple. Only for the better. I love her to bits, Yvonne, and I'll love her even more when she's the mother of my child. Then why not reassure her of that? Remind her why she chose you above all others. That Sophie Mackay's got a lot to answer for. Well, what's she done now? She's got your son in a ride on state. I couldn't keep up with him at the gym. He was going for it. Well, Daniel, can wait. I want to hear about you. Come on. Was the accident awful? Oh, that day all right. Man, they've got to do something about it. We were just lucky it wasn't me and Brooke. Why? Were you speeding? Fat chance in that van. It's a wreck. The only reason we found those people was I had to pull over. Is this the PCC van? Yeah, way for thin tyres. Don't even ask me about the steering. That thing hasn't been serviced in I don't know how long. It was meant to be new. You guys could have been killed. Only we were the lucky ones. No, that is not the point. Brooke took that sponsorship deal out of my hands. She cut me out of the photo shoot and then she knowingly put you both at risk. How could she do that? I'll give her a break. She lost the patient today. She's taking it pretty hard. Are you joking? She was in here an hour ago asking me to check her lipstick. Not a care in the world. Well, it might look that way, but people deal with stress in different ways. You've got to trust me on this one. Here you go. One coffee to go. Thanks. Oh, and by the way, your trial contract with the cafeteria expires at the end of next week. Callum will be in touch, one way or another. One way or another? It's not supposed to mean. It means that she's winding you up. Don't worry about it. Well, I'm counting on that contract. I need Calm to renew it. And why shouldn't he? Your price is good. The punters seem happy. You haven't stepped on the old man's toes. It's a done deal. Well, I believe that one is signed off. Libby does this all the time, you know. Messes with your head. It's just this residual crappy love stuff. It's poison. Aroha of me. Strictly no strings, OK? No L word, no pressure, no expectations. It is great. You should try it. No, I don't think so. You'd rather pine after Libby? Come on. Even when you two were together, it was a minefield. Like me and Tess. So what if we loved each other? It wasn't enough, not with our problems. Maybe we didn't love each other enough. No, it was the age gap. Dad was right. I should never have gone there. What about him and Brooke? What's the age gap there? Whatever. If a relationship's screwed, it's screwed. You need to get Libby out of your head. What if you had your time again? With Tess, I mean. Well, I'd do things a lot differently. I'd be out and proud. But you don't get second chances, do you? 
Okay, you've got me here, so let's talk about buying a house. No. No? No. This isn't about planning for the future, it's about now. It's about you and me having some extra special Gerald and Morgan time. So... William Hartnell was Doctor Who. Where did you find these? That's my little secret. Now, I've ordered our favourite drinks and I thought dinner and then maybe home for a little Dalek fest. Awesome. And speaking of fests, they've announced a date for FanFest 09. I think we should go. To Melbourne? Seriously? Yeah, make a holiday of it. Relive old times. Gerald, that's fantastic. We're going to FanFest. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's the Southern Hemisphere's largest annual sci-fi festival. With special guest star, Devin Thorson. Devin Thorson? <gasps> no way! Robotic, Robotic man! man. <gasps> Living, breathing proofs that there is indeed somebody for everybody. Geek. Oh, geek yourself. How do you know it, huh? Just uh, taking a breather before the after work rush. Doing okay? Of course I am. Why wouldn't I be? I made the wrong call. I know that. And the patient paid the price. But what's the point of me bleating on about it? Wasn't a bad call. Don't patronise me. We both know I'm a stuff up. Both as a doctor and a manager. Look at that sponsor van. How did I let that happen? How did I let Devlin just walk away? It took you by surprise. I you said had... don't patronise me. I'm not. You are making excuses for my blunders. My medical bag wasn't even properly equipped. No cat tourniquet. No emergency bandages. A man died, DK. Not because of you. You did the best you could with the resources you had, and you totally held your own. Emergency medicine is tough. Now, not many people can keep it together under pressure, but you did. Just a shame about the outcome. Yeah, losing a patient is tough. It gets to you like nothing else. Hurts in ways you can't even explain. There's no shame in what you're feeling, Brooke. We all go through it. It's OK to need help. I respect what you did today. I heard about before, and um, I'm going to cover the rest of your shift. Well, no, no, it's fine. Look, you've been through enough. Please, just let me do this for you. Those photos of the accident? No, but I... I'm not interested. I'm doing a story for the Gazette, okay? Those photos might save someone's life. Yeah, sure, like they'll print anything you write. You're a junior working for nothing. I sold them my idea, an expose on the Dale Road death trap. Then the council might actually do something about it. Are you serious? I'm not a kid anymore, Hunter. I'm in the real world doing real things, so get used to it. What about the privacy issue? No, the dining room is uh, all yours. For both the meeting and afterwards. Okay. Knocking off already? You're on a cushy number. Actually, I'm working. I was hoping to interview Hunter about a piece I'm writing. Hunter? I wanted a paramedic's perspective about the black spot on Dale Road. I've already interviewed TK. Not on my time, I hope. And I'm sure Kieran doesn't want you distracting his staff either. So please, run along now. I think it's up to Kieran whether I stay or not, not you. Um, underage in a bar, Sophie. It's not the best headline. Well, that was perfect. Just what I wanted. Oh, shall we order dessert? With Doctor Who DVDs to watch, we'll buy ice cream on the way home. I'll get the bill. Evening. Hi. Uh, Matthew, this is my husband, Gerald. Uh, uh, Matthew is a friend of Araha's. Right, nice to meet you. Uh, another musician? Oh, sadly, no. Completely tone deaf. But I do try to make up for in other ways. Can I get you guys a drink? Oh, uh... Thanks. Uh, we're just leaving. Some other time, then. See you. That was a bit rude. We could have stayed for one drink. Really? Well, what happened to extra special Morgan and Gerald time? No. Oh. You're right. You know what we can do after that DVD? Snuggle up. Go online and make early bookings for FanFest so we don't miss something fantastic. Great. Oh, uh, excuse me. Excuse me, could we get the bill, please? Oh, Kieran knows what we had. 
<laughs> hey, I'm getting a lift with my mum. Well, she's busy. You might be waiting a while. Maybe his nips would be a better bit. Um, I hope that copying is work-related. All above board. Injury statistics for Sophie Mackay. She's out writing a story for the Ferndale Gazette, no less. Is she now? Mm -hmm. She's meeting a new boss at the IV. I said I'd take these over. Oh, I'll just sort my stuff out, mate, then I'll take you. Well, I'll take them over for you. To Sophie. Same Sophie you wouldn't speak to this afternoon. It's cool, TK. She wants to be my friend. I can deal with that. You sure? Yes. Someone's still got his hopes up. Being a good journalist is all about tenacity. You have to get the whole story. Never take no for an answer. I won't. Get the shots. Don't think twice. Never shy away from taking a risk. That's really good advice, Lloyd. Thank you. So I've outlined my story. Do you think you'll buy it as well as the shots? Get it written up and we'll see. Anyway, places to go. See you tomorrow. So thanks heaps for sticking up for me before. Sophie, you can't be here. That's going to be back any second. Show me you love me and then I'll go. Uh. Look, no one's looking. It's just you and me. I mean it. I just need to know that you still love me. Of course I do. I love you like crazy. Oh, Kellen. Stan. The agenda has already been circulated, but I'm sure we can slot one more thing in. 